I don't know started yet, but I don't think I don't think summer starts until July. For me, it's until July. Right. So, Some people think it ends in July right. after July 4th. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not one of those. June is usually a busy month. Me, so yeah, but we'll be ready for it. We'll be ready. How about you? Uh, July. So we can start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, welcome to the June 26th, 2024 meeting of the Mayor and the Finance Committee. We are doing it in a hybrid mode, so um, we are in person and also available on Zoom. Um, so welcome. Thank you all for coming. And the first thing we will... Do we have attendee? I think it's just me. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I just want to make sure what okay. no, Paul said he was definitely, I think he's in London, so I don't think yeah. the time is going to work for him. <laughs> um, so, first uh, issue on the agenda is any citizen requests to address the Finance Committee? Uh, if no, um, do we have any minutes to approve, Molly? Yes, we have May 6th and May 13th. Okay. For the short meetings right. before town meeting, correct? Correct. correct. Yeah. So I uh, move that we approve the minutes for the March, May 6th and 13th um, finance committee meetings. I'll second that. Uh, great. Let's just take a roll call vote. Jim? Yes. You have to I, I abstain. Right, abstain. John? Yes. Barry? Yes. And the chairman votes yes. Uh, before we move, I just wanted to introduce Joe Brucey. Do you want to just? Sure. Oh. Yep. Uh, so I'm Joe Brucey. Uh, some of you may recognize me. I used to sit on the other side of the table uh, for a little while. I've been a resident here for about eight years. I've uh, been interested uh, in things that are going on in the town. I'm a town meeting member, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to join the finance committee, serve this committee and the community. Thank you both. So welcome. Welcome, well, well, thank you. We're happy to have you. And uh, the other addition to the finance committee, she's not here, Tina Burgos. Uh, she's on vacation. She was sworn in at the same time approximately the Jillis. And so we will welcome her in the fall. Um, so I guess formally elect officers for fiscal year 2025. I would um, like to make a motion um, that we elect uh, Cal Rochetti as chair of the finance committee for fiscal year 2025. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carol didn't vote. I want that real <laughs> Uh And I would like to make a motion to that we elect John Conley as the vice chair of the Union Finance Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, so that's that. And then why don't we turn to the two business matters on hand. Uh, first, the reserve. So I think I saw Mark and Kathy driving to the Mystic Cameron Bridge right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not going to push us off. They're just going to jump themselves. <laughs> Mark did say, so, you know, Michael B. asked me if I wanted to be on the finance and I'm like, no, find your own friends. <laughs> 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 he's got the whole let's not put that in he's got the whole <laughs> <exchange>. <laughs> well that's okay it's being reported so <laughs> anyhow um the finance department reserve fund transfer let's look at that first yes uh um, the finance committee uh seeking the reserve fund transfer for twenty six thousand five hundred dollars the driver of this has been the story that you've been hearing all year and it's technology related and we've, um, uh, as committees aware, we had to uh, use some outside firms 
uh, in addition to the companies we usually use for repairs and such to support, uh, particularly in the area of public safety, help desk or uh, network after our calls. And we, of course, uh, transferred the money from salaries for the vacant positions into expenses that cover those costs. Well, um, as of uh, last week, uh, we are expecting, oh, we are already overcommitted by $26,000. And to ensure that uh, I don't have an unpaid bill of a prior year, uh, I would need to transfer $26,500 to uh, show up the bill for the year. Um, that, um, that, that's good by me. I just had a question to sort of, um, just looking back over the last month and a half since town meeting and then maybe forecasting, how are things going as far as the changes we've made in the, the, um, with the personnel and in the school department and is it, is it going well so far? The uh, the preparatory work is happening. The actual effective date is uh, is Monday, right. and but the union negotiations the school department had to do uh, were finally concluded. And they reached agreement that was just about ten days ago. So basically, we were in a holding pattern until they were able to resolve um, that issue. But that worked out favorably. Uh, the negotiation for the town union went fairly quickly uh, because as long as the two individuals were still going to have continuous employment, um, that was their only concern, and they will in the school department. Um, the transition of uh, the contact with the different companies and signing names and uh, contracting authority, that's all in the works now, and I'm not anticipating any uh, any uh, problems with that. So uh, one follow-up question I have to that is that most of these expenditures are related to, are, are most of these expenditures related to the 24-hour public safety technology needs? Uh, responding to public safety, um, but not exclusively public safety. It, it could be um, Issues that come up during the day, network or or you know, uh, cyber attack issues that okay. require extra time. But the more expensive part is if they have to come in after um, half to five or certainly on weekends. Mm -hmm. But does this portend that the forecast that you have for the combined entity and expenditures going forward will be higher than what was originally anticipated or? Is this really just a timing issue or? I think it's a timing issue. The police and fire are becoming much more comfortable with uh, school IT folks now as well. So, um, so we'll call the other problem was until the school department reached agreement with the union. Other than the two non-represented employees, nobody from the school IT would go into a town building. So we now have that resource that now okay. they've reached that agreement. Okay. So, so a similar question. If a lot of this is for vendor services with their transition to this being managed by the school committee, do you anticipate a lot less dependence on vendors and more on employees of the union? Um, it'll be a mix. Uh, one of the issues were uh, that we have been supporting public safety with an individual who had left us that just loved technology and literally would be available on Thanksgiving Day when he was away with his family on the ship. He was 24-7 he was to the name of 24-7. Most people we hire are not like that. Mm -hmm. And after hours is going to be an issue, but it's not going to require the same level of involvement going forward because now we have... Uh, we have a resource of 13 people instead of a resource of two people here. So uh, so it won't go away, but I don't expect it to, uh, to increase. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I, I would make a motion that um, finance committee approve the recommendation or the request for reserve fund transfer um, 
as set forth in the paper in front of us. The finance department on 26,500. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair. All right, so um, reserve fund transfer for the town clerk's office. There are two parts of it. One of it is with respect to the salary and the overage on the salary um, is related to the number of elections that we have had. Um, and actually the other one is as well. The expenditures are as well. Um, the state has a mandate with respect to uh, early voting and it's an unfunded mandate, basically. So um, what the Secretary of State has done is they have taken our request for those portion of the expenditures that are due to the state's unfunded mandate. And I have submitted a request for a little over $30,000 to the Secretary of State for fiscal year 24. They've actually approved my, um, request for expenditures and have forwarded it on to the state auditor. Um, I don't think we're going to get funding this fiscal year, um, which leaves us with a small deficit. Um, the budget is very tight in the town clerk's office. And if we do receive the funds in fiscal year 2025, I think it, we'll just be using them to offset the basically the same expenses that we're going to have for the state primary and the November presidential. Um, and, you know, that's about it. We liquidated absolutely everything that we could. We transferred absolutely every personal expense that we could to whatever other accounts were available. And we were left with this small deficit. So do we always get reimbursed by the state? We have for the last yes, two huh? years. For, and, and, and for what specifically? It has to be specifically for vote by mail. Um, additional expenditures that we would not otherwise incur. So it's not the registration. Okay, right. It's okay. a lot of, um, you know, just the stamps and other yeah. things. And then the early voting for anything that the state has mandated. So that's been since the pandemic that they yes, yes. funded that? And they had, you know, obviously they had CARES funding initially. Um, but for instance, we don't get reimbursed for the early vo voting that the select board mm -hmm required for the local election, mm -hmm. but for the vote by mail, we did. What would have been the deficit had we not used salary savings from your position, which was low until July 1? Of 20,000. Yeah. So, so, so you're really talking about um, 27, mm -hmm. almost 30,000 mm -hmm. of a shortfall. So my question is, uh, as you move forward into next year, does the budget have sufficient funds to take on what you believe to be these no, expenses? Or I don't think so, but we will be receiving the reimbursement for this fiscal year in fiscal year 25. At this point, that's my guess. Yep. So we'll have those funds available. And the elections are earlier in the fiscal year than September and November. So I think... I'm hopeful that we should receive any reimbursement that the state provides before the end of fiscal year 25. And but these, the short answer was no. And these are true reimbursements that don't go to free cash. There would be reimbursements that would be able to be appropriate. That is correct. Uh, and they're actually uh, expendable right. by the government. So and and we'd be applying again for? I'm applying for every penny that yeah. I can possibly apply for. Well, I think it's good that the town clerk, someone who has some familiarity with finance, mm -hmm. comes to us only two days or three days before the end of the fiscal year. <laughs> so, I applaud that. <laughs> I don't know. I think we should grow her a little bit longer. <laughs> we have some time on June 30th. <laughs> um, I would like to make a motion for the finance committee to approve the reserve fund transfer into the office of the town clerk in the three thousand four hundred dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? It passes unanimously. 
Um, any other updates? Minus for me. I had a question sure. related to the agenda. Um, so I know that tonight there's a meeting going on around how to establish an EDU. Mm -hmm. um, Would you want to leave to go to that meeting? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask, um, I haven't followed You've it. just been appointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, do property taxes change as a result of someone establishing an ADU? Do we get more revenue? So we asked that question. Yeah. And I think the answer was that it's really hard to say because some might argue that it actually decreases property value because it decreases your usable area of space. Whereas some people will say, well, you're increasing your livable space. And so therefore it is a greater value. So I think it's, and Dave, correct me, but I think it's just too early to tell. I don't think we exactly know what the financial implication. But except that now that you don't have to be related. Well, does it right. does, does it actually no. count, count as new growth? I think that's the right. only, yeah, that's the only real question. Because if it's not new growth, then you just moving the pie around a little bit differently it's so it that is it, for the town it doesn't change but if it's actually counted in as new growth potentially it would unless there was actually the construction of an abu in the yard a separate building it's right okay. it's, it's interior work that's de minimis in right. terms of value now but yeah. technically, if you add a bedroom in that sense to your house, it's it's like a renovation. Well, again, well, yeah, that bedroom, whether it's an ADU or you just add a bedroom, right? Well, that's you, you, and you're expanding the footprint. Right. And there's a potential of additional tax revenue, but working within the confines, and perhaps there are illegal ADUs already in town. It perhaps a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and you would be. I would not be surprised. Oh, okay. And um, so it, it's not going to be a major uh, tax revenue generation, but those who actually expand their garage to have it above, right. or they add uh, another freestanding building, that potentially can add some value. But that's the, my understanding of that is the focus of the emphasis of the I always forget the acronym for the not for home for the housing coalition of NEDA, right? Home. They're not home, no. not home. Um, but that group is to really emphasize the building of freestanding ABUs as housing alternatives. So and, 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 and that would be new construction. Correct. And so that would be subject to the building inspector and correct going out and putting a value on it. So I, I think the answer is maybe maybe, maybe <laughs> we you know if it turns very much towards that, then I would say yes, but I'm I'm not yet convinced that's gonna happen. Okay. It's curious if we in the next year. Try to balance revenue expense, and I and I still think you know wh whether any other committee agrees with me, and I'm sure they don't. Uh, but the quality of the town and what we expect of our town, the character of the town, you know, all of this is implicated by these things. No one seems to want to talk about that. Um, they all want to talk about their agendas and their problems. But you know, we'll see whether the town you know embraces this concept or not. Hard to say. Certainly hasn't been so far, but it's that it needs to be seen mm -hmm. since it was approved a year ago. Right. right. So we're a year into it. Right. But I mean, there are other there are other areas of the country that have gone down this path, you know, and it's pretty active, like in California. Well, it's a move. Yeah. It's a move. I mean, that's this is not. Just someone coming up with an idea. I mean, this is this is a, a national agenda and a national move. Mm -hmm. Whether it's good or bad, I 
I suppose that's yeah. none of my business. So. We just don't like our mother in laws living with us. I, now I'm on the record, so <laughs> I won't say nothing. <laughs> Uh, any other updates? Did you have anything from the school meeting? Yeah, uh, I went to the school uh, we had a liaison meeting last week. Um, it looks like the turn back is going to be around two point six million dollars. Um, they will. The school committee will be discussing it and voting it at their July meeting, which I think is like July fifteenth. Um, I think that their plan is to you know, keep um, I put down a, a million dollars for um, uh, SPED expenses for next year and out of district tuition and increases they expect to see, unexpected to see there coupled with um, expected decreases in circuit breaker reimbursement that is being forecast from. Um, uh, Beacon Hill, and then to uh, turn back the remaining one point six million dollars, which would make its way into free cash. Um, so that was the discussion from there, and then there was a discussion, and there was nothing. I won't share anything sort of confidential, but um, the FY twenty five is when the primary school unions are uh, contracts are expiring, so they'll be entering into negotiations. Um, late this fall, early next winter. And so um, obviously based on what has happened in other towns, it'll be interesting to see um, and what their approach with. I think that they're definitely going to be um, confronted with requested changes on uh, various benefits and leaves um, and um, expecting substantial coaling request increases and things like that. So so they were just, um, you know, it's, uh, there's nothing we can do about it right now, but it was sort of forecasting. That's one of the big things that's going to come up. And I think one of the things that we'll have to do for next fiscal year is to see how we um, uh, how we can anticipate that and plan for that, um, both within the school budget and, and perhaps in other places within our budget, um, because it very well might not be negotiated at the time we finalize our budget in March. And so... Um, is, so we're going to need to, well, it's going to be one of our challenges next year. That's why Joe joined the committee. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> so those are the two things that came from that. Do I see a new school budget rep? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak too quickly. Uh, and Mr. Bernard, any new member updates? Uh, Joe and Tina, and, yep. and there were some some other persons that were are in this interviewing. So, um, but we have two great additions so far. So, but if you know if there's anybody that expresses an interest to you, Barry, to be on, you know, mm -hmm. just let us know. So. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember his name. We talked to someone at the I, I, Women Voters Night, and I can't remember. I, that was a faux pas on my part, not taking his name down. That expressed an interest in the Finance Committee? It's not your neighbor from the vineyard? No. John Bullion? No. I remember John. <laughs> He's saw. Okay, so if there is nothing else, I make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, this meeting is adjourned. Thank That's you. Thank you. Joe, best of luck. Thank you.